Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Megan and I'm glad that you're watching this. All right, so today I'm gonna to be talking about my journey, sorry, it's a little windy, um, my journey with exercising with chronic illness and then later once I figured out I had cranial cervical instability and what it's been like for me exercising in a neck brace. First and foremost, I wanted to mention um, that not everyone should be exercising with cranial cervical instability. And I am, I wanted to be really clear on that. Um, I put a disclaimer in every description of my YouTube channel that I am not prescribing advice for people across the board. Um, I know for some people, from what I've heard about their experience, that they cannot exercise. I think that's the majority of people. And if they do, it will make them worse. And so I'm, like always simply sharing my experience and what has been helpful for me um, that doesn't necessarily mean it will be helpful for you i hope that it is but it may not be all right so now that i got that out of the way um i so part of the process for me in finding the diagno the diagnosis of cranial cervical instability was ruling out chronic fatigue syndrome myalgic encephalomyelitis and one of the things that is central to that condition is having post-exertional malaise, PEM. Um, and during that process, I was unsure at first if I had it because fatigue and malaise in general were, were just so um, central to my symptoms. Sorry for the wind. Um, and so I, I often thought that sometimes exercising was helping me and then sometimes I thought it was making me worse and I couldn't tell. And so that is part of the reason why I did consider my allergic encephalomyelitis for a time. And so how I ruled out um, post-exertional malaise was I took um, about two weeks off of exercising and I only went on walks. I didn't do anything more than that and I have never felt worse in my life um, that was probably the hardest two weeks I've ever had um, with my chronic illness journey this was also before I had traction or any relief from cervical instability but I wanted to mention that because I was unsure if I had post-exertional malaise or not I couldn't tell because I had so many symptoms so that clarified it for me to give you guys some context I have always been an avid athlete um, I've never gone more than two weeks in my life besides early childhood um, without significant exercise so to even take that two weeks off was substantial for me and the first time in my life I'd taken that long off of um, exercising and I went from even with life-altering chronic health problems I went from exercising five to six days a week um, I was a runner at this time running up to 11 miles a day not every day I would fluctuate between probably three to 11 miles um, and I also would mix up running days with stationary bike days but I was doing, I'm just sharing that to explain, um, I was doing a lot of exercising, even with my life altering conditions. And then when I was ruling out um, post exertional malaise, I cut that out and just went on walks. And even trying to walk um, during that time was extremely difficult during that two week period off of exercising. I often couldn't walk without somebody by my side holding my arm. I was far more fatigued. Um, I was, my dysautonomia was through the roof. It was, I even like remember during that two week period, I, it was hard for me to get to the bathroom. There were some days it would take me like an hour and I'd crawl from my bed to my bathroom, which is in the same room. And so, um, I really wanted to share this video because movement and continuing to raise, like 
continuing to bring my heart rate up has been very pivotal for me. Um, and like I said, I know that's not the case for everyone, but for me, it has been really important. Um, and part of like my best guess why, um, or not guess, but um, educated assessment, it like my doctors have said, it's likely because of the blood flow that my body is getting and um, my brain is getting. I figured out during some diagnostic processes that every time I put my head in certain positions, um, my left jugular vein is completely compressed with every heartbeat. So um, it makes sense for my specific case that I benefit from raising my heart rate um, because I get more blood flow throughout my body. And so that is likely why it is benefiting me the most. Um, and so I wanted to give that context. I have also always had an active lifestyle and I've always, I haven't upped my exercise. It's gone down drastically, but I continued to do it. I'm not maintaining what I used to be doing. That would be right, far so. Too and then more specifically, the exercise that has helped me. Um, I used to be a, a runner. Um, I cut out running completely in the fall, fall of 2020. Um, so I haven't been running for a really long, for a decent amount of time. Um, the jostling was just too much for me. So I can't do every <laughs> type of running. And I was doing that without the neck brace. Um, my doctor told me not to surf anymore. Um, I also, so I'm just careful about the kinds of exercise I do. Um, I, when I started to figure out I had CCI, I transitioned to just riding a stationary bike, um, and holding my body in one position and not moving my head, um, not jostling around, just moving my legs and trying to keep my upper body, my core, and my head stable. And that's overall benefited me. Um, on my worst days when I have pulled myself to the bike, um, my mental clarity is better, my fatigue is better, all of my dysautonomia is better, just across the board, my symptoms improve. And the days that I don't, I suffer more. So for me, that has been helpful. Um, before wearing the neck brace um, and then I once I transitioned to the neck brace I continued just stationary biking but I now do a recumbent bike five to six days a week and um, just move my legs and I bike from 30 minutes to an hour depending on the day um, and for me something that my doctor has advised me is to just really listen to my body um, and do whatever is helpful. So if anything I think is not helping me, I won't do it the instant I'm exercising and I think that it might be aggravating any symptoms, I stop. Um, I'm very cautious and I play it safe. And so that would be my one piece of advice if you are continuing to exercise play it safe, um, don't do anything that you think might be making you worse, and um, most importantly, I would say ask your doctor what they think. My doctors have told me it is okay for me to continue exercising, and so those would be my pieces of advice. Um, I hope that this is helpful.